Hi, I'm Ree. And I'm Sally, and we're participants in the 2018 Women in Shark Science program run by the South African Shark Conservancy. One of our tasks is to communicate scientific literature to the public. So today, we're going to be talking about tonic immobility and its use in the study of zebra sharks. The paper we'll be focusing on today is Tonic Immobility in the Zebra Shark and its Use for Caption Methodology by Michael J. Williamson, Christine Dudgeon and Robert Slade, found in Environmental Biology of Fishes. But what exactly is tonic immobility? Well, although some of you may think it refers to this kind of posture, which normally results from a few too many of these, tonic immobility is a reflex that causes a temporary state of inactivity in an animal. It occurs in a variety of animals and it generally appears like the animal is in a state of paralysis or hypnosis. Not all of its functions are certain, but it can be related to mating, predator avoidance or deterrence. You may have seen pictures like this, where expert shark divers use tonic immobility in their interactions with sharks. Sometimes it occurs naturally when handling or redirecting a shark, but it may also be done for the photo opportunities it presents. As well as this, it's often used by shark researchers to keep sharks calm at the surface while they conduct their work on them. It even happens naturally. Killer whales have been witnessed ramming sharks in the right place to induce tonic immobility to have the upper hand and begin removing their favourite tasty treats like the liver. But what does any of this have to do with zebra sharks specifically? Well, it turns out quite a lot. Zebra sharks use this technique amongst themselves in a unique way. But first, let's talk about zebra sharks, and specifically the zebra sharks featured in this study. They belong to the order of the carpet sharks, and they are the last remaining species in their family. Zebra sharks are more commonly known as leopard sharks due to their spotted adult appearance. But they are born with brown and white spots and bars. This little one is so cute. They are generally not an aggressive shark and many divers and snorkelers have enjoyed swimming with them. From November to April each year, leopard sharks congregate at rocky outcrops along the coast of South East Queensland and Northern New South Wales. These are the largest known aggregations with approximately 500 adults migrating to North Stradbroke waters each year. Now, about the study. A team of researchers, including Christine Dudgeon, from the University of Queensland wanted to gain more information regarding their movements, diet and genetics by using internal acoustic tags. Each acoustic tag emits a personalised sound which is detected when the shark swims within 500 metres from the listening station. This way we know when they've visited certain areas. But to insert these tags, they need to get the sharks to the surface, which can be challenging. A local diver told them that they could easily put the shark into tonic and pull them up to the surface that way. This was achieved by putting pressure on the caudal fin. And turns out he was right. They soon discovered it was a great method to study zebra sharks. So why is this method preferable? This method drastically reduces the duration of capture, which is much better for the shark and the researcher. The average capture time was decreased to about five minutes. First of all, spotting the shark, placing into tonic, bringing up to the surface, and securing to the boat. It's more effective. Before using tonic, a lot of the zebra sharks would actually manage to get away, which you can imagine how hard it would have been. It's able to be done underwater. Sometimes, not all sharks need to be brought to the surface for scientific procedures. And using tonic immobility, scientists can do a number of tasks under the water more easily. This is fantastic, and again, low impact research. It's less stress on the animal. 
The previous method involved holding the shark behind the pectoral fins and bringing it to the surface, occasionally involving higher stress levels for the animal. Using tonic immobility, the process was far smoother in almost all cases. Not only that, but it is less stressful for the diver also. As you can imagine, it can be rather difficult to capture and bring a shark to the surface with complete calmness. The best part, however, is that zebra sharks use this technique on each other. Male zebra sharks have been observed biting the end of the female's tail during a period of courtship and also during mating. This is thought to put the female into a position of submissiveness to allow mating to occur. Also, it's been suggested that this response may help zebra sharks play dead in an interaction with a predator. Overall, it's a less invasive, highly successful method to capture zebra sharks for research purposes. Thank you so much for watching our first vlog. We'd like to acknowledge the authors of the paper that we used and also all of the photographers from the images as well. We'd also like to thank the South African Shark Conservancy and the Women in Shark Science team.